it's time to go. It's that time again. It's time to say goodbye. And you know it's God City Hour because they're just showing drama, random stop footage. Yeah, they're only showing random stop footage on Japanese television. Check out. This is Tenku Bashi MO7. And here we are back at the airport. British Airways has got to be mine. And yeah, that was really fast actually. I think it like just took over 15 minutes and they've all cleared it and they started opening up more gates. So I'm really good. I'm gonna actually have a quick peek upstairs because there's something I did want to see but I didn't get to see time for your taxi. So up here. So unfortunately the Moss Burger is shut, so I can't get a Moss Burger to say goodbye. Opens at 11. It's nice because Another YouTuber I like did a video up here and it seemed like it was. It's like a lot of the places have reopened. There's still lots of, I mean this is 7 o'clock in the morning, so more could potentially open up later. Well, British Airways isn't that particularly busy for that. I think they only really have one flight to worry about. Which is pretty. And there's a few little displays. I believe there's some shops. Probably not going to go into full. I should really be checking in with security. There's a part of me going, dude, why aren't you checking in yet? Oh, that's all the little things. I may just go and check that out. Some last chance that's some gatchup on. Last chance to get a vending machine machine, but I'm going to probably do that the other side and be surprised. <laughs> that's cute. You can get like a ticket that's in a style, time style. I didn't really do much catch up on, there's a Genshin Impact one. Oh, there's a nice Lum one. You can get a bag of it in the Lum one and people just put their Zoom messages here, like in a stride. Japan is open. Japan is ready. Of course, it's going to be a bit next year. I think way more people come. But 
think of it as a successful pre-season. I know I said it wasn't going to come all the way out here, but hey, I'm a sucker. All the planes getting ready to go. As we look to say goodbye to Japan for now. But I think we definitely can say mission successful. Just a massive line. Of course, this is duty free. Of course, this is the one. Of course, we've got these really fancy shops. I think down here is just the gates. The restaurant shop. And the duty free. Over here is also a shop. But there is a duty free here. Planes are all starting to get ready to go. I will be going soon on one of these, but I'm not further down. It's funny how everything stays busy. Wow, there's a gatch up on the area. Just finished spending it, and I found the bookshop. Hopefully, that will have some food. I think mean, I was just going to go for a light bite before. The catch up on you can spend your money. And I got Dr. Zest, Dr. Zest. Pokemon and random animals that aren't Pokemon. It's now 8 o'clock. See what's up. We've got over here, we've got Pringles, we've got fruits. And these are all like the anime magazines, and then there's some more magazines. And they've all got snacks. And there's also some drinks over here. More magazines. There's even some manga at the top. Wow, they've got Twilight. I have found my gate, but it is way over an hour before we even board. So I think I'm going to find something slightly nicer. I think oh, yeah, it's nicer to sit down with them. Oh, look, it's there. Oh no, this one's not. I will say this is a nice way to spend the end of my holiday. Being down. Good way to end the trip. And a load of snacks to keep me going. Cheers. Time to go. My last steps on technically Japanese world, but I guess I'm now sort of in some weird international purgatory. 
Let's have one last look at Japan out the window. There goes Japan. Hello and welcome to British Airway Flight 0008. This is a flight from Tokyo to London and the airline is British Airlines. And this is my seat and these are all the items you receive at the start of your flight such as a pillow, uh, I was about to say towel, there's a blanket, uh, headphones, pretty standard stuff really for an airline, nothing super special. And yes, yet again I paid the extra £80 to sit in the front row, I would say really this is essential for a 13 hour flight because you get so much leg room, plus I was on the furthest away seat. So it sort of gave me a little bit of extra room to sort of lean into, which the person next to me, who lucky I befriended, uh, she was very thankful for. So here's my sort of first mini complaint. Unfortunately, um, this plane didn't have any Wi-Fi. The plane on the way out did. This one didn't. I believe most of these planes do, but I think there was about three or four planes had yet to be fitted. I could tell this was an older flight. This will come back up later in the review. Uh, so this meant I had to go and really check out the entertainment they provided me with. Also, I must say, if you do want to see a review on the Wi-Fi, I did do it on the way here. So yeah, that's the Wi-Fi you're going to get. So please do check out that video if you want to check out the Wi-Fi review. I will say what was on the entertainment system, I was very, very impressed with. They had a lot of different movies and a lot of movies they had not actually had listed on the actual website. They had a load of Christmas movies, it being Christmas at this point, literally think this was almost a year ago we filmed this. And um, see, they had stuff like Home Alone, which they said they had not advertised on the website. They had a real big range of movies. I even found the anime movie Belle, so it shows you they have some really out there. If you've not seen Belle, I do strongly recommend that movie. That's really, really good. They also had a nice wide selection of TV shows. I guess my own little complaint is I do know um, Japan Airlines, they actually have live channels like I think this is when the World Cup was on uh, that would have been really cool to have up here I think that's really the only thing British Airways is missing really on their entertainment is maybe some live channels whether that can be BBC or one of those international channels that they can stream in so that's one thing I'd probably would like to have seen added so here are my two little complaints unfortunately the TV didn't really lock into place and I have to sort of have the table out if I wanted to watch anything or less my leg on it and the other thing was the USB wasn't working I think you can see this this plane needed to refurb and I think it was about to go in for one and it didn't have the Wi-Fi so I'm hoping that this one has been fixed since this video has been made but one thing they did really well on this flight was the food we had a really nice chicken dish it actually tastes really good and was actually edible unlike most plane food and they even gave us a bottle of wine to swig down with it and you can see me I'm swigging it down because I've just remembered I'm going back to England and I'm going to miss Japan a lot so after this of course they dimmed the lights so people could get some sleep and we actually had a very special surprise as we were going over Greenland uh, the northern lights appeared literally we could see them on this plane yes a Borealis exclusively on this plane and yes we were allowed to see it it was really funny because literally everybody was coming up to our seats to see it because it's sort of where they had the viewing area and yeah it was just really nice to see everybody coming along uh, I mean it was such a this journey was such a I mean the trip overall was such a rich experience and sort of to, at the end to say you got to see the northern lights in person like wasn't something I was expecting to do but yeah it was just absolutely amazing to add that to the list of things I got to do in this trip also as I said earlier I befriended the wonderful guy next to me his name was David or Dave and uh, he'd also been mostly traveling in Japan solo so we actually swapped stories of all the things we got to do and it turned out he's also a big watcher of abroad in Japan so we just talked a load about like our favorite Chris abroad and I think we spent like almost hours chatting to each other and I mean I should really be sad that I'm on this flight but it was like such a wonderful experience and then to like be able to share everything we did we were like watching videos that I'd made and oh it was just such a like I bet I think I've only ended up watching about one or two movies because like me and Dave just ended up like talking for most of the 14 hours And the next thing I knew, I was back in England safe and sound. 
I took a picture with Dave and the other nice lady that we were sitting next to, so we can always remember this wonderful trip. After this, it was time to disembark the plane. Me and Dave ended up going to wait for our bags, which there was about a half an hour delay in, but this just gave us more time to chat about our Japan trips. And hey, what a better way than to say welcome back to the United Kingdom, then a trip on the tube. It kind of like reclimatizes yourself back to the UK, doesn't it? And that ends season one of Timothy in Japan. I will say that I came back feeling really, really re-energized and really up for lots of things. And I got to see so many amazing things over this year and it is totally Japan trip that was the thing that got me back out there. But overall, I was just happy to be back. Welcome back, Timothy. 